Okay, hello everyone. Today's um, read is lesson one from the Full Armor of God study, which is what is sin? And I've heard it said, and I think it's rightly said, that if our relationship with sin has not changed, then our relationship with God has not changed either. So I'm going to read through these and uh, see where we go. Okay, Romans 3, 10 to 20 says, There is no one righteous, not even one. There is no one who understands, no one who seeks God. All have turned away, they have together become worthless. There is no one who does good, not even one. Their throats are open graves, their tongues practice deceit. The poison of vipers is on their lips. Their mouths are full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Ruin and misery mark their ways. And the way of peace they do not know. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now we know that whatever the law says, it says to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be silenced and the whole world held accountable to God. Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in his sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious, conscious of sin. Okay, um, th there's a, a, some study notes that I thought were fantastic I want to share with you. Um, it says, uh, no one who assumes God will not discipline sin in this life or judge sin in the next will have a fear of God and will, therefore, give themselves increasingly, increasingly to evil. I think that is right on. Romans 3.23 for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 7.7 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. Indeed, I would not have known what sin was except through the law. For I would have not known what coveting really was if the law had not said, Do not covet. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the law, God's law, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one, you shall not, you shall have no other gods before me. And that goes for anything. You, do you put, do you bow down to any other gods? I mean, beyond what, you know, in biblical times, of, you know, the different gods that they bow down to, we have a different set of gods in this country, um, like money and sex and drugs and power. So are you bowing down to any other God except the one and only true God? Okay, number two, you shall not you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in earth beneath, or that is in, in the water under the earth. So the talking about here of you know creating a God of your own likeness. And I think what we primarily see in this country now is not so much a um, graven image or a carved image or a physical something, but more of a mind thing where we're creating a, a God to suit our own needs. We, you know, people tend to um, create a God that doesn't exist. Like the, they say, oh, my God won't send somebody to hell. Or my God is all loving. He's not wrathful or judgmental or he's not going to judge and, and the, the truth is that they've broken the second commandment when they do that. And the reality is their God wouldn't because he's, their God can't because their God doesn't exist. Um, so they're making a God of their own mind, of their own understanding, of their own preference. Breaking the second commandment. Number three, you shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Number four, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Five, honor your father and mother and your mother. Six, you shall not murder. Seven, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Nine, you shall not lie. Ten, you shall not covet. James 2.10 says, For what 
For whoever shall keep the whole law and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. Okay, there's um, three... Read, you read God's law and there's three quick things you can conclude. First of all, God looks at the intent of the heart, not just the, the outward action, right? And, um, and chances are, if, if you're like most people, if you go through these, you're 0 for 10. Okay, so what does that leave us with? That until you're redeemed, these commandments don't help you. They just leave you helpless. Okay, but they do exactly what they're supposed to do. Remember where we just read it? it? It shuts the mouth. It silences you. The law silences you and um, makes you conscious of sin. That's what it's supposed to do to the non-believer. Make you aware of the need to be redeemed. Okay, Galatians 5, 19 or 21. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you're practicing those sin, those sins, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. It gets pretty black and white there. Okay, Corinthians 6.18. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body, but he who sins sexually sins against his own body. Romans 6.20-21. When you are slaves to sin, now that's everybody, you either are a slave to sin or you were a slave to sin, right? So when you were slaves to sin, you were free from the control of righteousness. What benefit did you reap at that time from the things you are now ashamed of? Those things result in death. Okay, Romans 6.23, just part of it because we're going to continue on that part in future lessons. For the wages of sin is death. You know, wage is something that you earn, that you have coming to you. And when you sin, the wage you have earned, what you deserve is death and eternal condemnation. Okay? That's what we deserve. We've earned that. 1 John 1.8 if we claim to be without sin, we deceive, our, deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. All right, that's all I got for today. God bless you all. We'll see you.